What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the Onyx Report, Black Masculinist News. I uh, hope all is well with you. Life is going well. Um, something interesting I want to take a look at today. This is a piece uh, sent to me by uh, one of my subscribers, Good Brother Muwata. Hope he's well. Um, it's a piece you can find on blackenterprise.com. I just wanted to go through it a little bit. I thought it offered something interesting. So it's entitled, as you can see, black women are dying of COVID-19 at higher rates than men in other racial ethnic groups. Now, just right off, this is already suspect. It's already suspect. It's dated April 6th, so this came out a few months ago, but black men, women are dying of COVID-19 at higher rates than men is the lead off. And the, the latter part in other racial ethnic groups is a subtle way of repositioning the information. What do I mean? You guys know on my channel, I talk about flat blackness. Now, I talk about flat blackness and flat maleness. As a reminder, right? Flat blackness has to do, well, there's, a, there, you know, it, I, I first heard the concept uh, through ADOS, through Yvette Carnell. And she was talking about it in terms of how we just kind of flatten blackness and we don't differentiate between, you know, um, Africans, Caribbeans, you know, so on and so forth, uh, especially within the United States when we talk about blackness. That's what she meant by it. I'm looking at it through a gendered lens. And one of the things I noticed looking at it from a masculinist perspective is how when it comes to the data, in order to uh, garner attention and, and ultimately uh, produce policy in the interests of black women and girls, black men's numbers um, or experiences will be used only to the extent that it bolsters attention that can be baited and switched to black women and girls and LGBT, while most particularly heterosexual black males get kind of buried and swept under the rug. Um, or another way it presents, and you'll see this here, is that they will focus on the information and data as it pertains to women and girls. And if you're lucky, there'll be a slight mention about males. And what you'll often hear is that the men are actually men or boys and or boys are actually doing worse actually doing worse. This title lets you know that. See, if you look at it closely, black women are dying of COVID-19 at higher rates than men in other racial and ethnic groups. What do you think that means? That means the title is low key kind of telling you they are dying more than other, everybody except black men. They could have said that, but that would take attention off of black women. Hence why they're not. Right? So the title is really kind of deflective in a particular way but in a very subtle sleight of hand kind of way, you know, uh, we want to keep the attention on black women. Yeah. Black men are worse, but we don't want to talk about that. That's really what that means. Right now, flat maleness means that in many ways, when convenient, all men are lumped into the same pot, white, black, Latino, Asian, doesn't matter. It's kind of, and, and it doesn't always have to be explicitly stated. Sometimes it's just kind of a, an assumption that's kind of put out there. Right. They talk about men as a category as if statistically black men and white men have a lot in common. In many ways, they don't. But when it's convenient, all men are a category. So if you're going to talk about uh, challenging patriarchy, all of a sudden, all men have one category, even though there's no historical record of black men enjoying or exploiting, exploiting some kind of patriarchy at the expense of black women. But when convenient, maleness can be flattened to justify the argument. This is why when you hear people talk about patriarchy and they talk about white men, they can go to uh, the stats on home ownership, congressional representation, life expectancy. Well, not really life expectancy, someone, you know, or income. They always use income. Like they go to these other, these large scale areas to justify the critique of patriarchy in regard to white men. And when they come to black men, they give you anecdotal experiences of individual black men that hit their girlfriends or their wives. This is the flattening of maleness, but the, the, the equity they need in the discussion about how black men have a patriarchy is, is this connection between black men and white men. So that all of that the oppressive oppression equity that white men, you know, it, it extend to their women is somehow transferred over to black men. So it's not that the data bears out black male patriarchy. It's that 
uh, white male patriarchy is is transferred over and imposed on black men to make the argument. But when you ask for specific uh, direction, specific uh, examples, I should say, of black male op- oppression, you get individual anecdotes. That's how you know you're, de- you're being snowed. But anyway, let's look at this article. So according to a new paper in the Journal of General Internal Medicine published by the Gender Psy Lab, that should tell you something. Gender side, because when it comes to educational institutions, gender just means women. It means women, girls, and LGBT. Men have no gender in the academy. You can only find a a, a couple of departments across the United States that even explicitly deal with heterosexual men and and gender and women's studies. For the most part, non-existent. This is why the Institute for Black Male Studies exists online. It's outside of the institutional structure because by and large, men heterosexual men at that, that and black heterosexual men most especially don't have a gender recognized by the academy so when you see gender sci lab at harvard university you know they're talking about women girls or lgbt heterosexual black men don't exist anyway black women are reportedly dying at significantly higher rates than white men notice that notice that any other dynamic i'm going to talk about how a group of women are suffering, it's going to be in relation, if they're going to do it, deal with it in terms of gender, it's going to be in relation to their own men. We're going to talk about Asian women suffering, it's going to be in relation to Asian men. White women suffering, it's going to be in relation to white men, so on and so forth. But notice this bait and switch. Black women are reportedly dying at significantly higher rates than white men. Right? And disparities in mortality rates among women of all races are greater than those between white women and white men. That's real tricky too. Disparities in mortality rates among women of all races are greater than those between white women and white men. A little slick, a little slick language here. Disparities in mortality rates among women of all races are greater than those between white women and white men. So we're immediately comparing black women to white men and we're suggesting that um, women of all races have something going on that's worse than what's going on between white women and white men. Let's go further. The statement also said that the study is the first to quantify the inequities of COVID-19 mortality when examining both race and sex group. Um, Gender Sci Lab reportedly published the first analysis of sex disparity in COVID-19 mortality across racial groups while emphasizing the specific vulnerability of black women. On its website, Gender Sci Lab is described, this is key, right? This is key is described as collaborative interdisciplinary uh, as a collaborative interdisciplinary feminist lab a collaborative interdisciplinary feminist lab further it is reportedly uh, dedicated to generating feminist concepts methods and theories for scientific research on sex and gender now to suggest that you're going to research gender and describe yourself as a feminist means that you're prioritizing women and girls and so on and so forth. Okay. But when you start playing with the data and downplaying the experiences of men, particularly black men, that's when I take exception. That's when I call bullshit because you have men dying and nobody cares. Now, this is the weird part of COVID. White men are dying in the largest numbers. Black men are dying by percentage to the largest degree. These kind of articles obscure that reality and dismiss the the lives being lost, most particularly black male lives. It says this analysis complicates the simple narrative that men are dying at greater rates of COVID-19 than women. Lead uh, lead author Tamara Rushevich, Harvard PhD candidate in population health sciences and lab member at the Gender Sci Lab said in a statement. Results reportedly illustrate the common belief that men with COVID-19 fare more poorly than women, which varies in magnitude across social groups defined by race and ethnicity. The published paper is said to note key study findings such as, I'm going to read all four, but we're going to go back and focus on one. Black women have COVID-19 mortality rates that are almost four times higher than that of white men and three times higher than that of Asian men, as well as higher than white and Asian women. Actually, I'm going to skip the the second one. Um, The disparity in mortality rates between black women and white women is over three times the disparity between white men and white women. 
And when you start seeing bullet points that tap dance like this, they're playing with the data. Uh, the disparity between black men and black women is larger than the disparity between white men and white women. Notice how slick that is. It doesn't actually say anything about black men. It just suggests that the disparity between the mortality rates between black men and women are larger. Now, that usually means one group is dying more than the other. But this whole article is framed around how women are dying more so than men and are just not being acknowledged. Really, what they're doing is just saying that, you know, because black people have it worse, black women have it worse. They're worse off than white men and other groups of men. We have to talk about the women because as, as this is produced by a feminist lab, this is not being acknowledged. While all the while, all the while ignoring the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is black men. So let's go back to the second bullet point. Black men have far higher mortality rates than any other sex and racial group, including over six times higher than the rate among white men. Six times higher. So in terms of, of the percentages, black men's mortality rate is six times higher than white men's. But notice something. We go back to the first bullet point. Black women's mortality rate is four times higher than that of white men. Now, they could have just come out and said, black men are dying more than anybody. Now, they kind of do, right? They, black men have, have far higher mortality rates than any other sex and racial group, including white men. But the whole article is about black women. Black men have lost three years in terms of life expectancy uh, off the, uh, their lives due to COVID last year, 2020. I saw one article about it. This article highlighting and dancing around anything to do with everybody except black men, except for that one bullet point. Then the rest of the article, right? It was also reported that the paper's findings challenged the sole focus on biology as an explanation for sex differences in COVID-19 mortality. According to more details, societal factors related to gender in combination with racism and socioeconomic stratification have been identified as other important explanatory factors. Um, finally, the information provided in the statements also revealed that the study used census data and publicly available data from Michigan and Georgia, according to your URIC letter, a URIC alert, excuse me. These are the only two states reporting data disaggregated by age, sex and race to calculate and compare COVID-19 mortality rates. So all that to say, all that gobbledygook you heard was basically they're pushing the argument that women suffer to a greater degree uh, from COVID deaths and they're not being reported. And thus, we need to change the way we do research because clearly women are actually uh, they have higher rates of mortality. Um, but what they're doing is they're saying black women more than everybody else, except for those you know black men which actually reasserts the basic notion that, yeah, men are actually dying more by number and more and mortality rate. But you'd have to clarify the relationship between black men and as you'd have to argue that black men are men. But what they're saying is black men are not really men because black women are dying more than all those other groups, except for black men. So we're, we're an asterisk. Some of you might wonder why I do this kind of reporting, why I make these kind of analyses. It's mainly because I'm a father. I'm a father of a black male son. I'm a son of a black male father. Redundant, but it is what it is. Right? I'm a father and a son. That doesn't mean that I don't value my relationships with my mother, my sister, my you know cousins, female cousins at that. No, that's not what I'm saying. But as a father, most particularly, to sweep under the rug the deaths of black men and boys, to make a point that you hope will leverage or can, you, you hope will produce research that can be leveraged to produce policy, right? While ignoring the, the clearly higher rates and deaths of black men. That's when I call bullshit. Black men should not have. Look, you can clarify the quality of life differences between black men and women without sweeping black men under the bus. You don't have to throw us under the bus. You don't have to ignore us. You don't have to hide numbers. 
I mean, really, what you're just trying to say is, look, we want policy for for black women. We don't care about black men, even though the numbers are worse. I'm actually surprised they put that second bullet point in here. That second bullet point should have meant that this whole freaking paper should have highlighted that, but it didn't because it wasn't politically expedient and it didn't lend itself to the ultimate goal of the research and the article policy for women and girls at the expense of men and boys. And that trope has been a consistent and repeated practice across the board, especially, especially since 2015, the rise of BLM, the rise of a new era of solipsistic politics that focus solely on women and LGBT at the expense of heterosexual black males. And nobody gives a shit. See, the reason they're playing with mortality rates and the language and whatnot is because they want to use black male mortality rates to suggest how worse off the black community is. They want to use those numbers. They just don't want the attention to go to black males. And this is why I still go back to something Dr. Tommy Curry said a few years ago when he did an interview with Yvette Carnell on her show on YouTube. He said it is the attempt to make to it, it's the attempt to make attention outweigh death. It's an attempt to make the attention outweigh death. The desire for attention, which is a political goal and to, and to be used politically on behalf of primarily black women and girls and LGBT at the expense of black male death. Except now we're not talking about police homicide. We're talking about COVID-19 mortality. But in each just in each uh, each context, we see the same practice. Use black men's deaths, sweep them under the rug. Once that the, the, the juice is squeezed, once the equity is pulled from their deaths, do not name them. See, this is why I talked to you a couple of weeks ago about the commercial that came out from Xfinity about the Olympics. Right. And it was supposed to laud black women who's con who made contributions to the Olympics. I don't have a problem with that. Cool. Acknowledge them. But the way they started, they had to acknowledge that black men's contributions set the pace in terms of Jesse Owens. But the way they went about it, they showed a brief clip of him running. They didn't mention his name, didn't even mention his gender. They said a black sprinter and then named the specific black women while showing clips and describing the sports that they operated in and, che and cheered them on in terms of their contributions. That's what I'm talking about. Some people may see it as petty. I see it as connected to ventures and practices that go across context and ultimately become policy. That's the goal. That's the, those are the kind of policies BLM tried to pass this last year, taking advantage of all the riots that took place, particularly last summer or the uprisings, depending on how you want to view them and using that to muster policy. But at no point did that policy actually name black men who were the primary victims of the very issues that made BLM relevant. Same thing is attempted in this article in terms of COVID-19 COVID mortality. And this is why I take this seriously. Because black men are dying. Anyway, wish y'all well. Use the information however you need to. Hope it works. Peace.